Hi, welcome everyone. In today's tutorial, we are trying to estimate advanced models which are used when there is multicollinearity uh, and uh, we are focusing on tutorials using R. So, first of all, we we'll start discussing models. So, uh, there are three advanced models that can be used. It is multicollinearity. So, these models are used if you have an evidence that there is a multicollinearity and there is no option to reduce the variables means you cannot remove any variables because all of them are important or to create an index and if you make an index actually you are reducing variables so they are not that close enough to each other to make an index so there are three types rigid regression lasso regression and elastic net so first of all we will go towards our studio and check for presence of multicollinearity then we will come back to the discussion of these three models first of all the libraries that are required is Dataverse for data management, read Excel to read the Excel data file, MC test for multi community tests, OLSRR for regression tests, Caterplot, read Excel is twice so I can remove one of them, Caret for separating the training and testing data, GLMNet is for elastic net regression, Core plot is for correlation plots, QGraph is for distance correlation based distance graph. So I will read the libraries using control plus enter so all the relevant libraries will be read or loaded by the R studio and then what we'll do is we'll read the data first of all this is our command so df is equal to the excel read underscore excel and the directory of the file so here i will show you the data file it includes the data of uh, se se seven indices of logistics so it's a country wise data and there are seven indices of logistics I have uh, interpolated them and filled I11, L11, L21, L23 these are these are six indices of logistics and one overall so we will use I11, L11, L21, L31, L41, L51 and L71 and then we will estimate it against uh, trade balance so the idea of the study is that if there is good logistics sector then the country will have good trade performance so I will create a trade balance variable that is net trade divided by GDP so this is a new variable using mutate command and then I will take uh, the log of I will calculate the world GDP that is world GDP minus our domestic GDP so it's the rest of the world GDP is this LW GDP now what I will do is for this model you have to drop any values so you drop NA and then select the small sample so I am only selecting trade balance 6 indicators of logistics, world GDP and exchange rate now what I will do is this is scatter matrix so it can tell you the, the correlation positions so when it is loaded you can see it here load it again So you can you can see it here. So it's a it takes time to load. So I will show it again. So you can also do it. it just, you can see it here. So you can note that it's in the i i one to i seven are highly correlated. I two one is highly correlated with 0 0.93, 0 0.88, 0 0.92, 0 0.94, 0 0.9. So they are highly correlated. So we can confirm it using this df dot core plot. So, see so you can see it here that the correlation between I11 to I71 is very high and others are very low. So, this confirms that the independent variables are highly correlated. We can confirm it from QGraph. So, QGraph shows see all the variables are in a circle, but the thickness of the line shows the high correlation. So, all of these are highly correlated. You can make it using this graph so here the thickness and the distance explain the correlation so these are very close to each other similarly if you run the simple OLS and see the regression results you will notice that most of the variables are insignificant but there is a high R square value good enough and there is a significant F test so now we will go towards the uh, correlation test 
so this is zero order part and partial correlations so if the zero order correlation is very high as compared to part and partial we will see there is a multi continuity so for a case of uh, six variables we notice that zero order is very high as compared to other two so this confirms that there is multi continuity now we'll go back to the the slides and see uh, what should we do so So what does this model does is that this is a argumentation of elastic net model. So it says that it will calculate the new betas using the minimum of this function where this is the residuals. We call it loss and this is the penalty factor. So here is square of betas and absolute values of betas. So if alpha is 1 it means this absolute value is not there. So this model will become regression. If alpha is 0 then then beta square is not there so it will become loss of four and if alpha is between is in between point one and zero or it is equal to point five then it is elastic net regression and the, and these three methods try to shrink the beta beta values so it tries to find the actual beta values because because we already know that because of multi the 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 beta values are uh, overestimated because of correlation between with each other and this is because that when there is high collinearity the the matrix inversion is not possible so it overestimates the beta so we are trying to shrink it so it, it tries to find uh, lambda which shrinks the uh, shrinks the beta so higher lambda means higher shrinkage so we find the lambda by minimizing this following function using cross validation method and 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 then in r the same function is there but the alpha is opposite so here alpha 1 for rich and 0 for lasso but in r the glm net library it's opposite so it is 1 for lasso and 0 for rich and it will minimize this function and these are the authors of the library that is being used so uh, how we select between these libraries we see their rmse and r square which one has the smallest rmse and higher R square is the better model. Now we'll go towards R to estimate these more libraries. So what I will do is you have to set a seed because so that it will give you same results after the random sampling. So first of all I will separate the data 80% in the training and 20% in testing. And then I will divide the data based upon training and testing. Now we'll divide the data x variable which is uh, excluding trade balance and y is the trade balance dependent variable now we will run the simple OLS and, and and it will give you same results as simple OLS that we done earlier now we will go towards the ridge model so we are already separated the data we have already got x and y now we will run the cross validation for the ridge regression for alpha is equal to zero, which is ridge, ridge regression, and then we'll calculate the the plot for for the CV value. So here it is noticing that the ideal lambda is between one and six point two. So we'll find the CV value and minimum lambda that is two point zero two. So minimum value is somewhere. Here. So now we'll run the regression based on this lambda value, and, and then we'll show the coefficients. So you can see it here. These are the coefficients of regression while after the shrinkage. Okay. So what we can do is we can find the fit. So you can get the R square from here and significance. Then then. Uh, I, what I have done is I have used the same model and then checked and estimated using OLS and, and it will give you same result as OLS. Then we will calculate its RMSE and R square using these commands. So the RMSE is 16.33, R square is 0 0.07. Then we will go towards lasso rec using alpha is equal to 1. And then we will calculate its lambda minimum that is 0 0.307 and then we will calculate the coefficients so you can notice there the few of the variables are dropped because they shrank too much and they converge to zero means uh, 
the according to loss of regression they were not important and others other three are able to explain the remaining so similarly we can calculate its r square and rmse value and it is 16.46 so if you compare with the previous six months so it means the ridge regression rms is smaller as compared to last order now we go towards elastic net and and then we'll we'll estimate the minimum lambda and it is 0.42 and we estimate using minimum lambda so it has also dropped three variables now we'll go towards its r square and rmsc and it is 16.45 and if you go up and compare it with ridge and it was 16.33 so we can find we conclude that uh, ridge regression has a better estimates than all other models till here now what we'll do is we'll generate the plots so first of all we run them together alpha 1 for ridge 0 for lasso and 0.5 for elastic net and then we'll calculate their CV values and then we'll make a loop and then we'll plot them one by one so you notice here oh I forget it let me draw it again from start so these are the diagrams so you can see it here if you if you print it at a higher pixels then you will be able to see 02048 and when you store it R plot 1 when you store it in a directory where you can retrieve it let's store it on desktop in R plot 1 which has been stored so we can pick it up on desktop and let it load so you can see it here so in lasso and they are converging it slower and ridge it is ridges smoothly and in the elastic net is similar to that so it is in between both so this is the diagnostics of the model so this way you can estimate all three models and our conclusion is that ridge regression performs better because it has smaller rmse and higher r square and luckily none of the variable is dropped Thank you very much for watching, do subscribe and like our videos.